Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Well, went sailing over the weekend. Trim little sloop known as the Vampire. Named after its owner, Nash. Everything went along with a charming frenzy. The owner yelled, man the deck! And the captain promptly did. Just one man. Spread so thin over the deck, you'd think he was sprayed. <laughs> An afternoon storm gave us a time for a while. One guest was washed right over the side. We didn't rescue him because we just know he'll turn up. He did once before. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, Death on the Highway, was written by John Robert and stars Ted Osborne in the role of Carlisle with Alice Reinhardt as Ginger. And now for tonight's sweet symphony of screen. We're on Chicago's famous Skid Row. A brassy carnival street of flea circuses, sideshows, dives, and honky tonks. Let's follow a newsboy as he darts into Enrico, a basement tavern serving ragtime music and chili con carne. Please drag with us for less than time. You'll read all about it, paper, mister. Here, I'll take a paper. Hey, didn't I sell you a paper right here last night? Same place, same table? You did. Same place, same table, same me. You've got a good memory, mister. I'm sorry, huh? Samuel's jumping off that bridge. What a way to die. Yes. Well, what a way to die. Hey, you sound funny. Did you know Samuel? No, I didn't know Samuel. You got your nickel? What are you waiting for? Nothing. You don't have to get sore. Wait on the please. I did know Samuel. Bless the Samuels. Embezzled. $100,000 from Eric Carlyle, investment broker. And I'm Eric Carlyle. I did know Samuel. I was an eyewitness to his last scene on Earth. I played it. Oh, well, I can't face it. You have no choice, then. You had a position of trust, and you embezzled $100,000. $10,000? I just took $10,000, not the $100,000 that's missing. You're confused and hysterical. You lost heavily to gamblers, so heavily you lost track of how much. That's not what happened. The firm is in shaky condition. You used my small theft to cover a bigger one of your own. You stole the other 90000 from your own customer account. It's an improbable story, Samuel. No one will believe it. I stole only 10000 I, I can borrow, scrape, make restitution, but 100000 It means the rest of my life. The end of my life. Please, Carla. You stand trial and I'll help you. I'll do everything to mitigate your punishment if you cooperate. No! I won't be your cat's boy. I'll kill you first. Get away from me, Samuel. I'll shoot. I'll kill you and tell the police to attack me. Now get out. Samuel got out. Out of his coat on the bridge. Then over the rail just 24 hours ago. The police are still dragging for the body. With Samuel's death, I was safe. I thought. His plunge into the river made the police story simple and pass and solved. A thieving employee had taken the only way out. <laughs> but I wasn't safe. Even here, a heavy set stranger at an adjoining table guessed my secret. Troubled about something, Mr. Carlyle? Carter. How'd you know my name? I read it off that table cloth. You've been writing it over and over. Oh, I always do do my name. Eric Carlyle. Your name's also in that newspaper in your lap. I read the story a while ago. Look, if you're after a tot... No, I'm not. I'm just making talk. Funny how a man's fears stick out all over him, as if he's wearing a sandwich sign. Hate to break up your philosophizing, mister, but I've got to go. Go ahead, run. See if you can run faster than the eyewitness. Did you say the eyewitness? Yeah. Every crime has its eyewitness, Carla. Even the perfect crime. Who's the eyewitness? You. I ran, I ran in a high-powered convertible at 60 miles an hour into the teeth of an electric storm. The world all suffocating at 60 miles an hour. I ran faster, 70 miles an hour, 72, 75. The rain fell and the sky thundered. I kept seeing Samuel's face, 
Eyes up and begging blindly. Floating in every road puddle I flashed through, I pushed the counter away. But Samuel kept appearing faster as I murdered him over again with every puddle and every mile. And then, where the macadam was level and the rain puddles ended, there was Samuel, this time alive and real, standing deep in my headlights, right on the road with his thumb pointing like a grotesque hitchhiker. Look out, Samuel! Samuel! It was minutes before I dared get out of the car. The hallucination of having struck someone was so strong. When the mood passed, I went to look. I had struck somebody. And there was a witness to it. You bore down on the poor guy like you wanted to run him down. It's impossible. It was Samuel standing in my headlights, a man who died yesterday, a ghost. Yeah. How did a nut like you ever get a license to drive? This is a kid named Slim. He was trying to hitch a ride for us. I was waiting on the side, and he was summoning you. How is he? I don't feel no pulse. He's dead. You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. Have a look for yourself. I can. I hope he came into your car. There's a trooper's headquarters two miles up. Wait a moment. What for? Pneumonia? I'm soaked through to the skin. The victim. Who is the... Who was he? A kid named Slim, I told you. Friend of yours? Well, not exactly. I only met him a couple of hours ago in a road diner. He'd had an argument with a red-headed dame he was with. They were eloping to get hitched before they got to fighting. The dame faded in a huff and... The kid, Slim, latched on to me. You're a hobo. Sure. I'm a hobo and you're a killer. What about it? I didn't mean to insult you. I'm desperate. Yeah, well, mister, you will be when I testify as how you tore along at 80 and smacked into the kid like he was a paper bag. Why should you testify? The kid, Slim, meant nothing to you. You mean even less. If I meant more... Is that an offer shaping up? If it was. How much? A thousand dollars. Hey, you got all that sugar on you? Yes, it was a horrible accident. I'm sick in desperate trouble. What, what okay, would you... okay, okay. What do you want for your grand? Dispose of Slim somewhere and forget everything. Let me continue on as if nothing happened. Is it a deal? A thousand talks. Get it up. Here. There are twenty fifty dollar bills here. I'll go on. Sure. Hey, wait. Take the kids overnight bag with you and dump it yourself somewhere. I don't want to be stuck with it. I drove as far as I could get and pulled into the yard of a roadside diner. The storm was over and there was a wild gnawing in my stomach. I had to appease somehow. What a big mister. Uh, something hot, anything. Clam chowder, okay? Uh, sure, yes. Clam chowder was in front of me. A sickening slop. It would do nothing for the agony in my stomach. And then I saw her come into the diner and into my life. My first sight of her was a face in the mirror in front of me. She stood behind me. Mine company, mister. The public place? Sit where you like. I like right beside you. How's the chowder? Don't know. Haven't tasted it. Looks awful. Does it? How much do I owe you, mister? Uh, two bits. You going? Yes. Without tasting your chowder? Wait for me. I'm not hungry either. A gentleman holds the door open for a lady. Look, miss, you're beautiful and desirous and two's company, I'm sure, but I'm in no mood for flirtation. Neither am I, mister, and I'm in no mood for fish stories either. Fish stories? I haven't said anything. No, you haven't. But you're going to try. What are you driving at? I looked over your car before going into that diner. I wanted to figure how many were riding and see if there was a chance for me to catch a hit. Is that an overnight bag initialed S.W. on your front seat? S.W. Slim Williams. That's my boyfriend's bag. What are you doing with Slim's bag? I saw it lying on the highway and picked it up. I was going to turn it over to the state trooper first chance. Come I again. Said. 
And don't try to lie that Slim caught a ride with you and then got out forgetting his bag. Slim never forgets anything. I know Slim. We were eloping to get married. You think I robbed your boyfriend? <laughs> no. Not a guy with your fancy clothes and car. All Slim had on him was $30. The bag's just got a shirt, a toothbrush, and a keystone camera. I think you ran Slim down. Why, what did you think that? By the way, you're stalling and lying. All right. Your Slim did suffer a minor injury. I tried to stop for him, and a friend of his, some miles back, and stopping abruptly, my fender hit him a glancing blow. Where's Slim now? In a first aid clinic in Kenmore Township, ten miles behind us. Why did you lie about it? I didn't want to be held up any longer. I'm in a hurry. And why did you keep Slim's release? An oversight. Uh, just that. Believe me. I'll believe you when I see Slim. You're turning around and taking me to him. Come on, get going. Now, what are you staring at? You. <laughs> Don't pull that old wheeze. You've never seen me someplace before. But I have. There's a quality in your voice, the likeness in your face. Sure. I'm Zazu, the hula dancer you met in Borneo. No, Samuel. You're the face of a man I knew. You're another ghost. <laughs> I remind you of a man. Mister, you sure pay pretty compliments. But I still want to be taken to Slim. <laughs> Every crime has its eyewitness, even the perfect ones. I was my own eyewitness. I had run from Samuel, the bookkeeper I'd framed and destroyed, into a new terror, an even greater danger. I had killed a hitchhiker named Slim and run. And now a girl with hard, accusing eyes was forcing me to turn back, forcing me to produce a dead boyfriend. How much further to that hospital clinic Slim's supposed to be at, Mr., uh... What did you say your name was? I didn't. It's Carl... Uh, Chambers. Richard Chambers. Now you're lying again. Your name's Carlisle. Eric Carlisle. You live on Mulberry Drive. How did you know that? By reading. You've got your car ownership slip around your steering wheel. I'm Ginger Thomas. Hello. How much further to swim, did you say? Not much farther. Well, step on it. You're loafing along like we're out joyriding. We were close to the place where I'd paid off that hobo. And again, the thing was coming alive before me. The dead were coming back in the black puddles. The car overtook and splashed through mile after mile. Samuel and now Slim lying side by side. There had to be an escape for me. I had to rid myself of the girl at any cost. Why are you stopping? Rear tire feels flat. Take a look at it. Go ahead. Tire is low. Have to pump air into it. Got a hand pump in the trunk. Hurry it up. I found a tire wrench in my tool chest, the only weapon available. Uh, Miss Thomas. I'm used to being called Ginger. Ginger, I'll need your help. Tire pump keeps slipping. Someone has to hold it while I pump. All right, if I have to. Hey, it's pitch black and spooky out here. Where are you? Here, at the rear of the car. Hardly make out. Please hurry if you're going to help. I'm staying where I am. Did you really think I was going to walk into a tire wrench whacking down on my... Oh, my hand. You've got a gun. It's slim. I stole it from him when we quarreled. Can you still drive with that hand? Yes. Your bullet hit the tire wrench. The hand's just stunned from the concussion. Then let's go. This time I'll sit in the back and do the direct. In case you get any more funny ideas. What's our destination? Police headquarters. You're going to tell them you ran Slim down and then tried to murder me. Ginger. You warming up another fish story? No, no, no more lies. I killed your Slim on the highway accidentally. I, I couldn't seem to stop in time. Where is Slim now? 
The hobo who was with him disposed of him. For a price. How much? One thousand dollars. Cheap way out for you. I didn't haggle over price. I offered that much, and the hobo took it. I never haggle over the price of my safety. No price is too high. You're telling me. I saw you go for that wrench back there. Slim meant nothing to the hobo. Slim meant something to me. I understand. If I could make it up to you, somehow... He meant a hundred times more to me than he meant to the hobo. A hundred times more? One hundred thousand dollars? Police headquarters about a quarter mile up. One hundred thousand dollars is a foot. Sure, it's a foot. If it means my safety. Yes. I'm rich. Pull into the first cabin you see. I want the thrill of ordering a four-inch steak and champagne. You're, uh, not eating, Mr. Carlisle. Eric. Hmm? Formalities are a little pointless now. Okay, Eric. Go ahead. Order something extra good. <laughs> On me. <laughs> Thanks, no. Say, how are you going to turn over all that money to me? I have that much in my boat. In cash? In cash. <laughs> Good. Mr. Car- Eric. Yes? Don't look now. Across the room in the end booth, near the piano. Who is it? The hobo. The one that Flynn took up with. The one I took up with. You mustn't see a stranger. Let's go quickly. But I haven't finished half my stay. We'll get another one coming to me. We've got to get out of here. got out of the tavern without being seen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This dawns on me that your safety is my safety now. We're partners, sort of. And the hobo's your problem and my problem. I don't follow. If the hobo gets to worrying about what he's done for you and yells cops, I'm out that hundred thousand you're going to give me tomorrow, you see it? In a way... And if the hobo sticks his hand up for a second helping of your money, you can't pay him because I've got your money. So the hobo turns to me. But how can he get to me? He hardly saw me in the storm of darkness. I didn't identify myself. <laughs> you don't know hobos. That thousand dollars you gave him opened his eyes to a lot of possibilities. He doesn't know your name, but I'll bet you anything he jotted down your license plate number when you pulled away. And then... What can we do? Just one thing. One thing. If we're going to stay safe, we've got to shut him up. For good. Murder. You were the man with the lug wrench once. Look, I've got a fortune now, and Slim wants me to protect it any way I must. When Mr. Hobo comes out, we're walking him down the road and into the woods. The hobo came out, and we walked him down the road, then toward the woods. I was beside him, injured behind him, prodding him with a gun. <laughs> Ginger was protecting her fortune against the hobo, as cold-bloodedly as I had once protected my fortune against Samuel. Now, what's the rap, mister? I ditched a kid like we agreed. It's useless to talk. Oh, the dame's been selling your bill of goods. If you were Slim's girl, I'd seen her with Slim. Uh, you're in the clear on us, mister. I loaded the kid down with rocks and threw him into a lake. I've really done my bit for that grand. Stop here, Eric. I'll take him into the woods. You... You kill him? Yes, me. I'll have to do the dirty work. Can't trust you with a gun, so I'm stuck doing it. Uh, don't run off while I'm in there, Carlisle. We've got a morning date with your back. I won't run off. There's no place to run to. Keep walking, hobo. Uh, look, I'll, I'll give you back that grant if that's what's griping you people. I'll... Walk. They disappeared into the woods for a moment. Victim and executioner. There was a long, heavy silence. And then... <laughs> Thank you.
see. See this? Came out of the hobo's wallet. Why, 67432. It's my car license number. It was his number to a juicy career of blackmail. But we are really safe now. Sucker. <laughs> We came back to town, Ginger and I. In the morning, I went to my bank vault and turned a packet of new bills over to her. One hundred thousand dollars. The money I'd stolen in Samuel's name and hidden away. She took the money without a word and went off laughing. As if she had a huge joke she wanted to tell the world. I'm here in Enrico's now. I've been an eyewitness to a lot of things since Samuel. I'm back here because there's no place to run to. The heavy set stranger who called the turn on me last night is coming over. Weren't able to shake that eyewitness, huh? No. How can a man shake himself? I've been seeing Samuel everywhere. He's been a boy named Slim, Hobo, a girl named Ginger. Lock me up somewhere. I'm out of my mind. No, you saw right. Samuels and his family. His two sons and his daughter. Samuels? And his family? Samuels didn't leap into the river. He merely left his coat on the bridge. He walked away. But I ran over a boy named Slim. He was under my wheels before your wheels. He practiced just such a fall for days. It was all a frame-up then. A frame-up to trap me, Slim, the hope of the girl. No, not a frame-up. Just a wave giving justice a little push on a wave. Who are you? Another Samuel. Samuel's father, maybe? No. I'm just an odd job man working at a police headquarters. I specialize in digging up eyewitnesses. You're a cop. Yeah. Funny thing, how nine times out of ten, the missing eyewitness turns out to be the guilty party himself. Did uh, someone just say all Carlisle needed was a dash of ginger to cook his goo? <laughs> Say, though, Carlisle hung on to his sanity, but tenaciously, right down to the last crack. <laughs> uh, morals? Oh, I got a couple. Short fees on the nearest penitentiary wall, somebody. When embezzling money, be sure to amputate both hands so you won't finger yourself. And uh, this trencher. He who frames a bookkeeper only hangs himself. <laughs> Good night. Pleasant dreams. Sankum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for service men and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.